Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Poth on Programming video log and today I'm going to be doing part two of my four part series on tile types and how to do narrow phase collision detection on a bunch of different collision shapes. So today I'm going to be going over platform tiles and composite platform tiles, which are the blue and yellow tiles here. And they're actually really simple, so I'm not going to waste any time. I went over the broad phase and the routing functions in the previous video, so go check that out if you haven't already. And I'm just going to jump right into the code. So collide top is what's going on when I collide with the tops of all these tiles. When my broad phase detects that I'm standing in a tile space with a tile that is a tile that uses collide top, it routes the function to collide top. It uses a routing function to call collide top and collide top is called. So I'm just going to go over collide top. So it hands in an object, a row, and a y offset. So the object is just going to be my yellow square. The row, in this case, for this tile that I'm standing on, is row 2. So you could start out and actually count down. I have, starting at 0, I have is row 0, row 1, and row 2. So I'm in row 2. And a y offset. So for this particular tile, this is a 7 tile, this half height platform tile. The y offset would be equal to half the tile height, which is 16, so it would be equal to 8. And if I go up to the routing function, I'll actually show you guys this here. If I can actually get up there, come on now. Get up to 7. So when the broad phase detects I'm in a tile space and it has a value of 7 in the map, it calls the routing function labeled 7. And inside of this routing function, I just have the code specific to this half height tile. So it calls collide top and it hands it a y offset of what this evaluates out to is 8. So I get the, well, actually, I'm going to go back down to my collide top function here before I explain this. It's kind of a hassle. I'm going to have to find a better way to navigate through my code because I get lost a bunch of times and I like these awkward silences between scrolling or while I'm scrolling so because I have nothing to talk about when I'm scrolling I'm just scrolling so anyway this is the cloud top function so like I said you hand in the y offset into this function inside of the routing function for this specific tile type which is seven in this case and you define the top where is the top side of the tile so to get the top side of the tile, you have to take the row, which remember was 2, multiply it by tile size, which is 16. That gets us at 32. So 32 is right here, roughly, because we have tile size of 16. So we got 0, 16, 32. We add our y offset, which is 8, and that brings us down to the top of this half height tile. So then once we get the top, we need to test to see if the object is moving through the top. And how we do that is we take the object's current bottom position in the current frame of animation, and we check to see if it's lower than the top. And if it is, then we check to see if its old bottom position from the previous frame of animation is above the top or equal to the top. So to check that, you just say if object.y, which is right here, if object.y plus object.height is greater than top, and the old object.y plus object.height is less than the top, then we know we have a collision. And you can't really see what I'm talking about here because collision has already been resolved. But let's say my mouse is the y position here. The current y position would have to be down below the tile, and the old y position would have to be up above the tile. So that's how we determine that we're actually entering through the top of this tile. And once we determine that that's the case, we come in here and we just do collision resolution. We set jumping to false so we can jump again after we land. Uh, we set y velocity to zero so we're not continuing to fall as gravity is being added to the y velocity pulling us down. And we set object.y equal to the top of the tile minus the object's height minus a slight offset. So now this is all pretty straightforward stuff and you can see the logic behind it, but this offset is a little weird. And in fact, this offset is equal to 0 0.001. So it's the reason we have 39.9989. I don't know why exactly it's this number. It should just be 39.999, but I guess a rounding error or something. But 
And this is actually really important to include on the top sides of tiles and the left sides of tiles. And I can't show you on the top side, but I can show you why I do this on the left side. So if I come up to collide left, I can show you why I do this. Here we go. Awkward scrolling silence there. Okay, so I'm going to come into my code for collide left, and I'm just going to comment out. Well, actually, I'm going to show you collide left first while things are still working. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to collide with the left side of this half height composite platform tile. And I'm going to jump up and down, and everything looks normal. That's because I have that offset in there. So when I take the offset away and save my file and refresh my browser window and climb back up to the top here, now, when I jump, I actually fall down and hit the edge of the tile. And that is definitely not what you want to see. It doesn't really make sense to the players. They're going to see that, and they're going to be like, well, wait a minute. I was here. I jumped, and now somehow I'm a little bit farther to the right. That doesn't make sense. Well, actually, the reason this is happening is because of the way row and column are calculated. By subtracting this offset, not this dot offset, but this offset of 0 0.001, I'm actually moving my player object after collision has occurred with the left side 0 0.001 pixels to the left. And that's going to push me out of this tile space, this column here. And it's going to prevent me from colliding with it on the top surface when I jump up and down. Right now, I'm actually technically in this tile space. So this is valid. This is something that is accurate and supposed to happen. It's not a glitch. But it's not... Uh, it's a little unsightly, so we want to get rid of it. So just remember to add a slight offset when you're doing collision resolution on the left and top sides of tiles. And if I do that, come back up, and everything should be taken care of, and things are back to normal. You don't really have to worry about it on the right side, and I'm not going to go into why, but it's because of the way we calculate uh, row and column with math.floor, and it's basically just a numbers thing. If I laid all the numbers out for you, you would see it and you'd be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But I'm not going to do that because I just want to go over the narrow phase collision methods and how they work. And I kind of did that. The only other thing I will mention is that all of these, um, all these methods are basically the same. Clyde left has the same basic structure as Clyde top and Clyde right and Clyde bottom. The only difference is I'm adjusting for the different sides and I'm adjusting for what axis I'm doing collision on. So for example, Clyde left and right deal with the x-axis and Clyde top and bottom uh, have to do with the y-axis. So it's really simple. The reason I'm calling these composite tiles, by the way, is because it's just the composition of Clyde left, right, top, and bottom. Uh, so these blue platform tiles here, I'm trapped in this little box area, they only use one of these narrow phase collision functions each. So if I come up here and I look at my routing functions, if I go up to the top, you can see one is just a regular platform tile. All it does is collide top. It calls this dot collide top. This is a right facing. Two is a right facing platform tile. All it does is call collide right. So you kind of get the idea of what's going on here. And then if I come down to tile five which is this tile here, it's actually going to call all of those different functions. So it just checks all those different sides. So it's a composition of all the different narrow phase methods that you use. And doing, the, doing it this way, it makes it really easy to make different collision shapes reusing the same code. And all you have to worry about is drawing graphics and remembering to place them properly in your level. So that's basically it. That's all I have to say about platform tiles. They're really simple. Really, the reason I'm doing this, and I mean, I've gone over these before. The reason I'm doing this series is to show you guys slope tiles and curve tiles. I just want to be really thorough so I don't have to revisit this when I'm doing my later tutorials on how to do cooler, more game designy stuff. I mean, I don't know if it gets much more game designy than collision detection, but I'm talking about implementing stuff like uh, pick up items and doors and loading levels and loading graphics which by the way i do in this but i'm not going to go over loading graphics but anyway you guys stay tuned for the next part in the series part three i'm going to be going over how to collide with slope tiles and it's actually really cool so stay tuned for that and i'll see you guys next time mm -hmm.